Hi, this is another video on uh, graphing linear equations and recognizing graphs of linear equations. <clears throat> now, so far, we've graphed some linear equations simply by plotting points. We've learned about what the slope is of linear equation. That tells you how steep the line is or how not steep it is. Uh, we've also uh, <clears throat> looked at uh, graphing equations using y equals mx plus b, the slope-intercept form of the equation, where m is our slope and b is uh, the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. Uh, I say the y-coordinate of the y-intercept because technically the y-intercept is actually a point, not just a number. But, uh, um, so today we're going to look at the x-intercept and a very, very uh, useful form of writing the, a linear equation called the slope, I'm sorry, called the point-slope form of the linear equation. Okay, so uh, the first one we're going to look at is this equation right here. And you'll notice this looks a little different from other linear equations we've looked at because this one has some parentheses here. Now, uh, well, the first way I'm going to use to uh, graph this is I'm just going to do what probably most of you would do, and that is I'm just going to distribute that to, and so I'm going to say this is 2 times x, that's 2x, uh, plus 2 times negative 5, so it's going to be plus negative 10, or 2x minus 10, okay? And I know how to graph this guy. Uh, we're going to start with the y-intercept, negative 10, so I'm going to start here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, at the very bottom of my graph, that's right here. And then I'm going to use my slope, which is 2. And so I'm going to say, as x increases by 1, y increases by 2. As x increases by 1, y increases by 2. And so that means we're going to go through this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, and on and on. So it looks kind of like that. All right? So it goes through at this point. And actually, I want to look specifically at that point. Because that point is our x-intercept. Okay? This crosses the x-axis at the point 5, 0. Uh, 5, 0. So you'll notice that we started with a 5 here, and we get a 5 here for our x-intercept. This is not coincidence. Think about it for a second. In order for y to be 0, let's say this y were 0 right here. Well, 0 equals 2 times something. Okay? That means this something here would have to be 0. In order for this to be 0, x would have to be 5. So that's why we have a 5 right there. Okay? Well, this might very well come in handy because what we're finding is that if we have y equals m, our slope, times x minus some number h, it looks from our first example that uh, that x coordinate, that x uh, intercept, might just be uh, h zero. Well, let's 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 see. Let's go to the next one. Next one says y equals two times x plus seven. Okay. Well, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. It's going to be y equals 2x plus 14. So I'll just go over here and I'll uh, shoot. Can't do this because this only goes up to 0, 10. Uh, I would have to extend my graph to get all the way up to uh, 0, 14. So what do I have to do? Instead of using the y-intercept, I have to use some other point to start off my graph. Well. Let me see. Let's try the x-intercept. If y is 0, that means I have 0 equals 2 times, well, this would have to be 0, because 0 equals 2 times 0, right? So x plus 7 would have to be 0. That means x would have to be negative 7. Huh, okay. Well, let me try that. Let me say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 negative 7, 0, and sure enough, 
If I plug in negative 7 in here, I get negative 7 plus 7 is 0, times 2 is 0. So now I can use my slope of 2 and say as x increases by 1, y increases by 2, x increases by 1, y increases by 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and then I get this line right here. Okay? And sure enough, it looks like that's going to go up and hit the y-axis at about 14. So that looks like a good graph. Well, this is good. This way I'm able to graph some lines without having to use the y-intercept. Uh, let's try another one. Let's look at... Uh, oh! This time I have the line already drawn and I have to come up with an equation. Well, that's okay. I've done this before. Um, what I've done in the past is I found the slope of the line and I can find the slope of this line too. I see that it goes through this point and this point and this point and this point. And uh, let me just use these two points here. I go down 2 and over 3, and then down 2 and over 3, and down 2 and over 3. So my change in y is negative 2, because I'm going down 2. My change in x is a positive 3, since I'm going to the right 3. So that means my slope of this line is negative 2 thirds. Okay? And my y-intercept is... Uh, uh, hard to nail down here because it's more than 2 but not quite 3. It looks closer to 3 than 2 but somewhere in between there. 2 point something. 2.7, 2.8, 2.6. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to have to use some... Hey! I got this guy right there. Okay. So from what I've seen in the past, this goes through the point four zero, right? Well, what I saw in the past was, if I say y equals 2 thirds times x minus whatever I have here, 4, then since this goes to the point 4, 0, if I put 4 in for x, I would have 4 minus 4 is 0 times 2 thirds is also 0. This could very well do the trick. Let's see, if I distribute this, I would get y equals 2 thirds x minus uh, 4 times 2 thirds is going to give me 8 thirds. 8 divided by 3 is uh, 2 with a remainder of 2. So that's going to be 2 and 2 thirds. And sure enough, that is more than 2, but not quite 3. So that seems to be our line. So again, this time, Instead of using the y-intercept, we use the x-intercept, and our formula is working very nicely, where if we have y equals m, our slope, times x minus some number, then the x-intercept is that number, 0. Okay. And so, if you see y equals m times x plus a number, you could think of that as minus a negative, so that means this h here would be a negative number. Okay? Uh, let's try another example. Let's take a... Ooh. Okay? Well, this is another line where I can tell that my y-intercept is up here somewhere, but I can't tell exactly what it is. I do know what the slope is. As x increases by 1, y increases by 3. x increases by 1, y increases by 3. So I know that the slope of my line is 3. And I know that my x-intercept here is... What point is this? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is the point negative 6, 0. Okay? Well, using my new formula, that means y equals 3 times x minus negative 6, and I'm going to write that as x plus 6, or y equals 3x plus 18. Well, let's see if this is true. Uh, it's certainly true for this point right here, the point negative 6, 0, because 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, plus 18 is 0. 
What about this point here, the point negative 5, 3? Well, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, plus 18 is 3. Ha ha. What about this one here, the point negative 4, 6? Well, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, plus 18 is 6. It works. All right, cool. Let's see what is in store for us uh, next. We have... Huh. Okay, this doesn't look so hard. Uh, ooh, hold it. I don't have either intercept on this one because my y-intercept is somewhere between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, but I can't tell exactly what it is. And my x-intercept is somewhere off the graph. Huh, okay, what am I going to do here? Well, I have learned, well, one thing I can do is I can find the slope. To go from this point to this point, my y is decreasing by 2, so my change in y is negative 2, and my x is increasing by 4, so my change in x is 4, so that means the slope is negative 2 over 4, and that's just negative 1 half. Okay, and sure enough, I can see that as it goes down one, it goes over two, down one, over two, down one, over two, down one, over two. Yeah, so slope of negative one half seems to work pretty well. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this point right here as a reference point. I could use any of them, I'm just going to go for this one. Now, if I had the line of y equals negative one-half times x plus one. Just bear with me for a second. That would look like, I'm sorry, not x plus, scratch that. y equals negative one-half times x minus one, is what I meant to say. Okay? If I were graphing that line, then I would look at my x-intercept and I would say the x-intercept is going to be one, zero, and then I would use a slope of negative one half, so I'd go uh, over two, down one, over two, down one, over two, down one, over two, down one. And I would get uh, this graph right here. Okay? Now, as you can see, this line is parallel with this line. And so to, so to go from this line and convert it to this line, well, uh, this point would be turning into this point, and uh, this point would be turning into this point, and this point would be turning into this point. So really all I would have to do is just add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to each y-coordinate. So what I would do is I would take this formula, y equals, come on, write for me, y equals negative one-half times x minus one, and I'm just going to add one, two, three, four, five, plus five. As it turns out, that works. That works really, really well. Because if I were to distribute the negative one-half there, I would get y equals negative one-half times x, plus one-half, plus five, so that's going to be plus 5.5. .5. And sure enough, that looks like one, two, three, four, five point five right there. Um, what I did is I used this point, and I used what is known as the point-slope form of the line. Okay? And the point-slope form of the line says that when your slope equals m, and when the line goes through the point h, k, where h and k are just the, the x and y coordinates of that point, then you can come up with the equation y equals m times x minus h plus k. Okay? The h 
shifts your line over to the right if it's positive, or over to the left if it's negative, and the K shifts the line up if it's positive, or down if it's negative. Okay? Uh, last thing I want to show you uh, with this particular line here is that if I'd used this point, it also would have worked. Okay? This point right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. This is the point 5, 3. So let's say I had said this is y equals, uh, the slope was negative 1 half, negative 1 half times x minus 5 plus 3. Well, once I distribute the negative 1 half, that's going to be y equals negative 1 half x. Negative 1 half times negative 5 is plus 2.5 plus 3 and I get y equals negative one-half x plus 5.5, just like that one. So it doesn't matter what point I use with my point-slope form, uh, I'm still going to get the exact same uh, equation of the line. Okay, now, uh, some of y'all are going to say, yeah, but we already learned a way to, uh, to, to figure out what the, the function is, what the, what the equation is of this line if we know two points. We do the three-column chart like, uh, like we saw, I think it was two videos ago. That's fine. That works perfectly well. Okay? The three-column chart will always, always work. This also works. Okay? And the reason that uh, I think that this is a very important way to... Uh, um, uh, graph these lines is that the point slope formula, this guy right here, we're going to see some more formulas. We're going to see some, uh, some more functions in the future that look kind of like this. So it's nice to learn this form uh, because it's going to translate well to stuff that we do in the future. Okay? Alright, I have one more example to show you and that is uh, this example here. Oh my goodness. Okay. With this one, I have no idea what the x-intercept is. I have no idea what the y-intercept is. I have three points here. The point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The point negative 9, 4. And the point negative 7, 7. And I also have the point negative 5, 10. Alright? Now again, I could do the three-column chart if I wanted to. But I can also use my point slope form of this line. Okay, so uh, let's use uh, I don't know, let's use this point right here, the point negative five ten. Okay, and uh, and what's the slope of this line? Well, as I go over two, I'm going up three, so that means my slope is uh, delta y over delta x which is 3 over 2, or 1.5, okay? So, uh, I have 1.5 as my slope. I have going through the point negative 5, 10. So that tells me that y equals 1.5 times x minus negative 5. I'm going to write that as x plus 5, plus 10, okay? And, uh... Let's just uh, go ahead and distribute that. Y equals 1.5x plus 1.5 times 5 is 7.5 plus 10. And that's like saying Y equals 1.5x plus 17.5. And that's our answer. Real fast, you could also have done this using our three column chart. You could have said X y, uh, we have negative 5, 10, and this one here is negative 7, 7, so negative 7, 7, and we could have seen that this is uh, decreasing by 2, this is decreasing by uh, 3, so that means our slope is 3 over 2, so 3 over 2 times x, 3 halves times x, the 3 halves times negative 5, is negative 7.5. 3 halves times negative 7 is, oh my, uh, negative uh, 10.5.
and then we would say, how do we get from this column to that column? We add 17.5. So that means this is y equals 3 halves times x. I'll write it 1.5 times x plus 17.5. And hey, look, it's the exact same thing that we got over there. All right? So you can do it this way with the point slope form. You can do it this way with a three-column chart. Either way gets you the exact right answer. Uh, because really, in reality, you're doing a lot of the same arithmetic over here. In both cases, I had to multiply 1.5 times 5 to get 7.5. So in both cases, you're doing a lot of the same arithmetic. Uh, and so it shouldn't be that surprising that we get the exact same answer. Uh, the nice thing about the point-slope form, like I said, is that this is going to translate well when we start graphing other types of functions. For example, absolute value functions or quadratic functions.